A long time ago, I put out a video that shared with you some secrets on how to make some really cool flying food photographs. Well, in that video, I showed you how you can use wires to hold the food in place. And then you would composite out those wires using Photoshop to give the food that flying, hovering effect. That was a really fun video to make, but I thought, you know what? Why not show you guys how to get the same flying food effect, but this time in camera? However, I needed an idea for an image that would use this technique in a really cool way. So I thought, why not create an image that not only looks good as a single standalone shot, but could also easily be taken to the next level with some simple post-production. It incorporates a lot of little cool techniques and some pretty awesome flying food photography. By the way, before we get started here, this video is being sponsored by the great people over at Squarespace. You guys know them, they help you make some amazing websites and storefronts. My photography website, skylibertphotography.com, was made using Squarespace years ago and I'm still loving it. But I'll tell you all about that in just a little bit. You don't necessarily need anything special to do this type of photography, but one thing that does make your life so much easier if you're trying to capture splashes or, or flying food is a laser or a sound trigger like this one right here. I've had a couple in the past and I've never really been happy with them. They've always seemed to work one out of 10 times, but I got this new one sent to me. It's the Myop Smart Plus Trigger. Now, I've personally never used this before, but I know other photographers who swear by it. So it'll be a fun little test to try it out. Not really a review, but we'll see how it goes. However, if you wanna capture that flying food, you wanna capture that action in the studio, you're gonna need two other things to go along with this trigger. One is a laser pointer. I just got this cheapo one on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I'm gonna slide it into a super clamp and then tighten it down to where the clamp presses on the button, firing the laser. You point the laser at the MyOps receiver and when the action breaks that beam, the camera and the light should fire off. Now the second is of course lights and that flash, or if you're using strobes like I am, needs to have a really short flash duration. You see at my exposure, which is F11, I have a blank image, but when I pop off my light, bam, that action is frozen because it's that short flash duration that will actually freeze your action. Normally when you're outside taking pictures and stuff, you'd use your camera's shutter speed to freeze that motion. But in the studio, that's not really practical for a number of reasons. Now there's already a ton of great videos out there explaining flash duration, so I won't dive into it too deeply, but basically it's how quickly your light will turn on and off. Now not every flash or strobe is the same and not every power setting on that light will give you the same flash duration. You're gonna wanna check out your light to see how fast can actually fire and what power setting gives you the shortest flash duration. Some lights like my Edelchrome 500 ELC Pros here actually tell you right on the light as you shift through the different power settings. You can see that at a power setting of 3.1 on my light, it's giving me a flash duration of one five thousandth of a second, which is what I'm gonna be using for this shoot, but basically the shorter the better. Now before I even take this image, I already know it's gonna be a contender for my portfolio. At least it could be if I say had 10 more of these in that same genre. I don't, but I could because I know it's definitely a subcategory inside of food photography that's very popular with all these flying and floating and splashing images. Right now my portfolio is really broken down into four categories, savory, sweet, beverage, and motion on my website, which was built on Squarespace, the sponsor for this video. Squarespace helps you easily create beautiful photography websites and storefronts, and you don't need to be an HTML website wizard to do it. In the future, I hope to build out a flying food category in my portfolio here with all the flying splash photography that I wanna do. But for now, I'll just be adding in some recent work to fill out the categories that I already have. The reason why I have my portfolio site with Squarespace and I have for years now is because they make the whole process of creating and updating your portfolio super simple. I don't need to learn how to code. I don't have to search out some crazy HTML code to create this. I just simply upload my images and drag and drop them onto my site, arrange them how I want, and they're live. You might have already seen this video, but I'm adding my latest Patron Classic Margarita video to my site today, and Squarespace makes this whole updating process so simple. I just have to add a video box to my motion page, paste in that link, drop in a title text up here somewhere, and press save, and it's done. 
Super fast and simple with my Squarespace site and it looks clean and beautiful. They have a bunch of gorgeous themes for photographers. They're sleek, they're minimalistic, and they let your photography do the talking. I mean, I love showing off my work and it's really vital having a portfolio site. It's vital to my business. It's the client's first window into my artwork, into the stuff that I do. But I don't want to spend any real time doing it and because that usually means I won't. I'll procrastinate, I won't upload images, but Squarespace making it so simple to uh, you know, create a website, to update your portfolio, to add images, add videos with ease, it just removes that pain point because in the end, we'd all rather be spending our time creating the work, right? You can set up a blog with them, get your mailing list going with beautiful sign-up forms. You can create a storefront if you want to sell your products that you've created. And if you head to squarespace.com, you can get a free trial. You can create your own portfolio site, upload your beautiful images and videos. And when you're ready to launch, go to that link in the description below to save 10% off your first purchase of your brand new website or domain. It's just that simple. So use that link, create a brand new portfolio today. And, and hey, after creating some of these amazing flying food photos, you're gonna have a great set of images to kick off that new portfolio with. But hey, I wanna get back to this image and take you on a little behind the scenes here. The idea for the image that I have is a nice little stir fry vegetable toss out of the pan here. You know, as if the chef was tossing in over the stove top. It'd be really cool if I had a stove to use as a prop, but I don't. I mean, it'd be killer if I did. But instead, I've used some of these other props to give it kind of a more natural, realistic feel rather than using just simple studio paper. So I've placed a bottle of olive oil back there. I think that will add a nice pop of color when the light shines through it. And on this side, I have some wooden props, a cutting board and a plate. My idea here is that these props in the background will help frame up my action, frame up my flying food. That is if I can get this flying stir fry to behave and fit cleanly in this window of negative space. For my camera, I'm shooting tethered to capture one via this little orange USB cable here from Tether Tools. That way I can see all the action, see the results of each image without having to leave the table each time. And the camera is also connected to the MyOps trigger over there via this camera remote cable. Like I said before, I'm at an aperture of f11 with my Canon 50mm lens here. And you might be asking yourself, you know, why f11? Why so narrow? Well, it's for two reasons. One, I'm at a fixed power setting with my light. I can't really change that because I need that short flash duration. And also with the light at this distance, f11 is just giving me a good exposure. But regardless, I would most likely be at f11 anyways because I really want that narrow depth of field to capture as much in focus as possible. I think throwing around these vegetables randomly is going to be you know a real challenge when it comes to focus so hopefully f11 will help in that area one more thing while I'm on the camera is I've composed the image with a lot of negative space up top here in hopes to capture the throw in the frame without cutting any of the stir fry off as it flies up in the air although it's still a pretty short distance because my background is rather small so we'll see how that goes Speaking about the background, I've chosen to go with this darker color here to make the food pop off with contrast. I have larger backdrops, which would have given me more room for the throw, but they're brighter colors and I didn't want the stir fry to be competing or blending in with the background. For my lighting, it's pretty simple. I'm using my Ellen Chrome 500 watt studio strobes, like I said, with my large Rotolux softbox angled out just a hair and placed behind this large diffuser. Now, I wanna be able to create two shots here. One that is completely a single take, all one image. It has my hand holding the pan and the flying food with all that action, but no real post-production needed. Then I think I wanna have a whole other shot with the flying food in the pan, but then composite out my hand so the pan looks like it's floating or flying along with the food above the table. I don't think that this is going to be too difficult. It's just going to take a lot of tries to get a throw that I'm happy with. One cool thing about the MyOps trigger is that you can adjust the sensitivity and the delay of the trigger. I'm keeping the delay really short. And I'm not sure why you'd want to change the delay, you know, for a shot like this. I know the, the trigger is used elsewhere outside of the studio, you know, in nature and stuff. And so I could think of a lot of reasons why, you know, being able to change the delay could be very helpful. I'm gonna position the food to the front of the pan. I don't wanna pack it in there too tight, you know, keep it a little bit loose, but it's really gonna be trial and error to see kind of where in the pan the stir fry needs to be to give it a good flight on camera. I'm also stopping every few throws to rearrange the food in the pan and also make sure that I'm still in focus and haven't drifted backwards or forwards with my throw. To make this composite, I want this pan to be hovering above the table, so I'm gonna have to find something to rest this pan on. I just grabbed this random tape measure I had and then stacked my wallet on top of it. 
Now I want to kind of balance this pan so it's laying a little bit off center, not completely flat, but a little bit tilted. That way it gives it the effect that it's kind of falling with some type of gravity. Now I've also placed in a little bit of food here, some broccoli and other chunks of vegetables. That way the stir fry doesn't look like it's flying out of an empty pan. Then remove the base while holding the pan in relatively the same spot. That way I can capture an image of the shadow of the pan and the empty table beneath it. All right, well that was fun and, and a bit messy, but I think I have a couple of really good shots to work with here in post. I have a few of these flying stir fry images that would be fantastic candidates for our single one take image. No need for compositing. I've just done some simple color correction, brought down the temp, added some contrast and clarity, but that's it. They're ready to go and I think they're beautiful just like that. But I also want to see what it looks like if I take it a couple steps further and composite a couple of these images to create that impossible shot. So I've stacked these five images together as layers on a single document, one on top of the other, to composite them together. I have one for my main throw with this beautiful flying stir fry frozen in time. One image that I think I'll just use this awesome pea pot up here and another image where I'm just gonna grab this lime. And then the two images that we took of the pan, one with the pan and the handle and the one with the empty table and shadow below it. Using my pen tool in Photoshop here, I quickly composited the two pan shots together, which removed the tape measure and my wallet that I used to hold up my pan there so I could capture the pan's handle. This is gonna be my base image. Then I took quite a bit of time using the pen tool again to mask out the flying stir fry from its image so I could reposition it over my pan shot here. Doing the same to these other images with the pea pod and the lime, I think I'll add the pea pod at the very top and the lime down here to fill out this bit on the left. All in all, you could actually have three versions of this image. One which is just a single take image like this one here, or this one that I think I like a little bit better. It's cleaner and more elegant, and of course one with the floating pan and flying food. And one where if you wanted the best of both worlds, you keep the hand holding the pan for that human element, but then use the mask of the main stir fry throw and those smaller elements like the lime and the pea pod to reposition that action to a better location in the composition. But that's it for this video. Just one more before I tear down this studio and pack it all up. I'm gonna be heading out on the road for a little bit before I set this studio up in its new location. And while I was out there, I was thinking about creating an outdoor food photography video. Let me know what you think about that. If that's something that's interesting to you, drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. But otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next one.